Well, let's take one last look at this Nernst Planck equation. And from this last look at this Nernst Planck equation, especially if we think about how we might use this to describe the equilibrium electrical double layer distribution. Recall, when we solve for the equilibrium electrical double layer, we said that the concentration C was given by a bulk velocity times the exponential So we said that the local concentration was given by the bulk concentration times the exponential of an electrostatic potential energy normalized by RT. And I've made the claim that this Nernst Planck equation, in fact, can be used to relate back to solve for the distribution in the same way that this equilibrium argument is used. And we might think about how we would do that. OK, so at equilibrium, the Nernst Planck equation, the CI is not changing. So I might say, OK, at equilibrium, this goes to 0. And when I do that, now I have one term that's proportional to the diffusivity of species i. And I have another term that's proportional to the velocity of an ion u. If I'm solving for the electrical double layer, this velocity is actually given only by the electrophoretic mobility times the electric field. And this is assuming that the velocity, the velocity of the fluid, is equal to 0. And that's correct for our static equilibrium description of the electrical double layer. But if I want to get from this Nernst Planck equation, To something that really just says that the distribution of species is just an exponential function of the electrostatic potential energy, I have to somehow resolve the fact that I have one unknown transport parameter, the electrophoretic mobility here, and I have another unknown transport equation or a transport parameter there. And unless I have a link between these two, I'm never going to be able to take this equation and reduce it down to something very simple like this. <clears throat> what I need then is I need some description of how the way ions move in response to gradients must be the re related to the way they move in response to electric fields. Right? Here, I have an ion that's in, in an electrostatic energy uh, distribution. When there's a gradient in that electrostatic energy, that electrostatic potential, this thing moves. Here, I have an ion that's in a gradient of species concentration, or more specifically, a gradient of chemical potential. So here I have a description of how things move in an electrostatic potential. Here I have a description of how they move in a chemical potential. If I want to then relate that back to this description, which is basically an equilibrium argument, I need to be able to relate this diffusivity and this electrophoretic mobility. And that relation is this Nernst-Einstein relation. This Nernstein relation says that the diffusivity of some species normalized by the thermal energy of the system is equal to the electrophoretic mobility of these species normalized by z times f. Right? And we can show that this is basically a description of how motion in a, uh, in a concentration gradient is basically motion in a chemical potential. Here, it's motion in an electrostatic potential. Technically speaking, this relates back to the fluctuation dissipation theorem, although we won't get into those details here. But what this is basically saying is that 
the motion of species in a chemical potential gradient, as described by D over RT, is the same as motion of these ions in an electrostatic gradient. Now, this relation is true only for This is true only for point charges. As soon as I have an ion that has any dipole, as soon as I have an ion that rotates in any electric field, its motion in an electric field is not going to be the same as its diffusivity. So as soon as there's any structure to my ion, I can't say that this is strictly true. But as long as I have point charges, then I can. <clears throat> and if I have that relation, I can take this, take the limit where dc dt is equal to 0, and I can derive this expression, or alternately, I can just derive our equilibrium description of the electrical double layer. That will be yet another fun homework problem. There are going to be a lot of ho fun homework problems. By the way, the upcoming homeworks are going to have a lot of hyperbolic signs and cosines and tangents. So you want to sort of get yourself excited about that just in anticipation.